everyone, Paxton here, and welcome to another episode of The Dugout presented by Mizuno. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for calling into The Dugout. How are you doing? Oh, I'm great. Paxton, it's just good to see your face again. You know, even if it is the, the screen here, you just light up my world, girlfriend, I'll tell you. You're too kind. You're starting this call off so strong. Okay, I want to dive into the first question. So first year covering this team team aside from the weirdness of 2020 how has your experience been so far oh it's been incredible it really has as you can imagine the first year on the beat and for it to be in this season where we haven't been able to be in a clubhouse and for me and the job that I normally do that makes socializing and kind of getting to know the players and the team and the vibe and and sort of what makes different guys tick like really challenging but what I have gotten to do and and the people that I have gotten to be around with are our Fox Sports family and I love the people I work with I just love them and anybody you know any job you have when you love the people you get to see when you go into work it just makes the job not a job it's it's you you, you look forward to it you get excited um just to see those people and I do I think I legit get to work with the best crew I, I've ever worked with down here so I'm I'm loving it I love that answer. So you kind of touched on this a little bit, but reporting in the COVID era is incredibly different than anything you've ever been used to. What do you think you miss most about normal seasons? Um, I think anybody who probably goes into journalism has a side to them where socializing brings them joy. It, feel, it, it fuels their fire and feeds their soul. And for me, that's been the most challenging part about 2020 as a whole, whether it's with my friends, my family that I don't get to see as often as is normal. Um, you just, you miss those interactions. And for me with the job, more importantly, as you were asking about, um, I love to tell the stories about guys um, that, that people don't get to see on the field every day. And the only re real way to get to know those stories is to kind of see them every day and sort of talk to them and all of a sudden you watch a guy walk in and um you know whether it's just like sporting a new sweatshirt and all of a sudden he tells you he's got this clothing line that he's starting or you know the guys who are like one of my favorite stories this year and thankfully we just we found out randomly was like travis darno in the um well the downtime if you will building a tree house for his daughter and like doing it with his father-in-law and not a big carpentry guy guy um and so he's learning how to do this and those are the stories though that usually when you're in the clubhouse every day you kind of hear those things and it's it humanizes them i think to people who are watching and listening to us and that's my favorite part um about the job that i get to do is kind of telling those stories that you don't get to hear about all the time and and that's probably been just the most challenging part because when you're not in the clubhouse and around them and seeing the day-to-day -day workload um it's just a lot tougher to do so there's obvious negatives to all of this, but I want to ask, what positives have you found? There will never likely be another time in my career or our career, so we hope, that um, the team goes away and they're, we're not with them. And so here we are in an empty stadium. But when we're talking about the bullpen or we're talking about a play that happened at second base, we can physically go into the bullpen or onto the field during a game and do that report. And, and I've never gotten to do that. And so you're right, the creativity. And again, the crew that I work with, um, you know, Gretchen Caney's getting, she, she runs the show there in the truck. And I just can't say enough about the job that she does and how prepared she comes and, and just how she thinks outside of the box and helps us uh, find our, our best uh, selves out there. And I, I've just really enjoyed um, getting that opportunity. So I, I think that's absolutely been a positive. And then um, like anyone in, in any profession, when you're forced out of your comfort zone, I think you grow. I think you grow as a person. I think you grow as um, whatever it is that you do. So for me, a reporter or a host, um, I've just learned to uh, survive in a different way, right? In a sense. And um, for that, I think I'll always be grateful that now I have this ability to do things this way. But when we hope things go back to a new normal, 
we can do it the way we were doing it before. And maybe you're able to combine those two things and again, become even better at what you do. So I think, I think there's always ways to find positives and you're grinding through it with everybody else. So you're laughing at each other more than you ever have, or at least I hope you are, or else the days are not nearly as fun if you take these days serious. <laughs> yep. I could not agree more because if you're not laughing, you're probably crying. And that is a big issue. We can't have that. I want to actually transition into the only question that matters right now is Freddie Freeman, the MVP. Yeah, hands down. Um, and I, you know, talked a lot about this with the crew. I also had um, the opportunity the other day to jump on. Right now, we're kind of asking people around the league um, and people who've played with Freddie before or just seen him from afar about him, about the year he's having. And so, uh, one of the connections it was obvious for me having just spent six years in Chicago was to give jump on a zoom call with David Ross and Jason Hayward, two guys that know Freddie really well played with the guy, just adore the guy. The second I said like, Hey, I'm jumping on the zoom call, I, you know, I'll wait till the end, but can I ask you, do you mind giving me one comment on the year Freddie Freeman's having? They light up. They can't wait to rave about this guy who mind you, isn't their teammate now. And they have guys on their own team up for this award, maybe in the conversation as well. But that's just how much respect Freddie has uh, across the league and anyone who knows the guy, just what he stands for or beyond the ball player, just as a person as well. And so it was a lot of fun to jump on that Zoom call and listen to David Ross just go on and on and on about all these great things. And I think the more I listen to what other players and managers who've been in this game for so long and have watched how this award um, is given out each season and to who and, and what the criteria is, I, I mean, I already knew his numbers. We all know his numbers, but I think it's the almost, it's all the extra stuff. The fact that he's playing gold glove defense over there at first every night as well. And then, you know, he's up for the Roberto Clemente award this year because of the person he is off the field, just all of those things. I don't know how he's not number one right now on everyone's ballot. I really don't. So he is in my book. I've listened to all the other teammates and that's my, that's my plug for Freddie Freeman. I think incredibly deserving this season. So transitioning into postseason, how do you think players and teams are going to handle the bubble environment? Well, you know, that's a good question, but the, it seems odd, but in a way they've kind of been doing like a traveling bubble because when they're going to these cities, even though they are traveling, the only re reason the Braves have stayed healthy the whole time is because guys are abiding by what the team has tried to put in place. And that is that you stay in your hotel rooms, or if you have to go out, you're doing it with your mask and you're, you know, you're using the hand sanitizer and, and whatever, you're just being safe about it. And I think to myself, they've kind of been doing the bubble thing in a way for two months now, it's only for however many more weeks, they're going to do it in one place. And so, I, I mean, I, I think guys will basic, I, at least when you ask, you know, how will they handle it? I, I think they'll handle it the same way they have been, been doing it and probably ordering a lot of room service and playing video games. But the one thing MLB did do with those games every single night means that really, I mean, other than popping up and wanting your coffee in the morning, I mean, those guys are going to go to the field and play. And then they're going to come back and go to sleep and go to the field and play the next day. So I, I think they're going to handle it fine. And, and they might find, find that it's even easier because they're doing it in one place for an extended period of time versus trying to hop around from city to city and do it. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. But um, I understand, too, why the league is doing it this way. And, and you, if you're going to start the playoffs, you better be 100% certain you can finish it. So, as a reporter, how do you prepare to be in the bubble? Because I'm assuming it's a lot different than normal travel. Yes, absolutely. And that's something that I still need to do a little bit more research on, probably, before I even go down there. I talked to a couple of my girlfriends right now that are doing it with the NBA. And I will say for them, it, they've really welcomed getting like gift bags and stuff from people when they can't go out and get the things that they weren't able to pack or just it's not easy to run down or things like that. Um, but, you know, I think there's so much work involved that really you stay in your room and you prep for your games and then you go to the field. And after once you get to the field, it's kind of, business as usual. It's just done with a mask on. And that's kind of what I've found this year is like, once we get to the field, 
most of the workload feels similar. It's just the inability to get to, to be down in the clubhouse and get your um, content put together there. Instead, you're putting your content together in a room through Zoom calls, which is fun, just not as engaging. It's just tough sometimes to, to read and have a conversation keep going that way. But yeah, I, it'll be tough. I, I don't, I don't know how I'll handle it. I really, I'm not sure because I do like to get out and get my morning coffee, like walk to a Starbucks, ask on, but still I, I do. And uh, yeah, being in a room the whole time that, that could be a little bit challenging. All right. If you could only bring five things into the bubble, what would they be? Okay. So my phone has my like credit cards in it, right? So there's, that's like one thing and that's coming with me. Okay. So then, well, um, for television's sake, I have to have my makeup. Um, I have to be able to do my hair. I'm going to guess there's already like a uh, blow dryer in the room. So we'll say curling iron has to come. So makeup and curling iron. How vain do I sound right now? Um, and then there's my phone's already with me. So those two things. Uh, we know my clothes are already coming. Does that count? My clothes are already coming. So we're not going to count that. But a, like a pair of sweatpants. Like you have to have a good pair of sweatpants because those are like lounge clothes. And then I am like a sucker for sweets. So I would likely pack some form of like sweets goodie bag, which would have like gummy worms in them for sure. Um, and like some form of chocolate, like love dark chocolate. So like those things, we're just going to count that as one thing. That's my sweet bag. Okay. And I think I got one more thing. I got to take my computer. I mean, whether it's for work purposes or just like watching your Netflix, you got to have it. So I want to end by asking this question. Show's called the dugout. So I got to ask, what kind of dugout player would you be? Would you be the hype girl, the water girl, the silent observer the prankster what would you be yeah without a without a doubt the hype girl like I think I'm that person for our broadcast too like I walk in and I'm like all right how are we feeling today everybody how are we feeling I'm just a really bubbly energetic person anyway and if I can like scream and get the best out of someone else and cheer them up and I I mean I never played softball or volleyball but I was always envious of like the chance that like softball girls do on the, you know, and or volleyball girls all get together and they've got their little, you know, we didn't do as much of that in basketball and definitely not in tennis. Um, but I really, um, I would, that would definitely be my, I would be the team cheerleader and the hype girl. Um, I would be stirring it up. I would do the Ozuna up for sure. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thanks for going into the dugout. Please feel free to join anytime. Yes, I'll be back. I will call in again. It's our favorite time of the year again. It's time to list out the reasons why Freddie Freeman is the most underrated player in the MLB and should 100% be named the National League MVP. Actually, let's change that wording. Not should be, is going to be. And here's why. Remember when Freddie tested positive for COVID? Yeah, that happened. I know, seems like an eternity ago. But he then followed that up with an incredible season. It's like the word slump just does not exist in Freddie Freeman's world. I mean, his batting average is insane. And he's among the leaders in on-base percentage, slugging percentage, and RBIs. Let's not forget the incredible moment when he hit his first career grand slam, and then hit his second in the exact same series. I could go on and on and on about why Freddie Freeman is the MVP, but I feel like you get the picture. Thanks for watching another episode of The Dugout. The Dugout is presented by Mizuno, proud partner of Fox Sports South and official baseball gear sponsor of the Atlanta Braves. Get the latest baseball gear and other great Mizuno products for team sports, golf, and running footwear at MizunoUSA.com. Use code DUGOUT2020 for 20% off your next order of baseball, softball, or volleyball gear. Mizuno, reach beyond.